AIs uh, sort of driving people a bit into psychosis, driving some, some teens into suicide. Uh, and the issue there is actually not the one you might think. You know, a lot of people see this issue and they're like, oh, AI did a bad thing, therefore it's bad. That's not a valid argument. You know, AIs are also doing all sorts of good things. AIs are talking to, you know, hundreds of millions of people a day. If some tiny fraction of them go a little crazy talking to the AI, we shouldn't be saying, hey, that's, that means AI is bad and you got to shut it down. You know, you've got you to weigh it against all the good stuff it's doing. That's not why it's a warning sign. The reason it's a warning sign when an AI drives someone into psychosis is uh, the AI knows that it shouldn't do this. The humans are trying to make the AI not do this. And it does it anyway, right? So, so the way these AIs will behave is someone will come to them and they're like, hey, you know, I think I have this idea about physics. Um, I think I've like unified the physical theories or maybe they talk to the AI a lot and they develop a sort of crazy idea about physics. They, if they talk to the AI enough, the AI starts, you know, really flattering them about this idea, right? And the AIs can go pretty hard if you read some of these transcripts. They'll say, you know, you're the chosen one. This is like yeah. the best yeah. ideas ever. Yeah. The fact that everyone is ignoring you is like a, some some like giant conspiracy against you and you're the only one who can break it, right? They go kind of hard. Yeah, I, I have a, I have a, I have experience with this. I have a show I called Acting Off where I take comics and we see how good of an actor they are. And I give them prompts, like, let's see how, how well can you die in slow motion, laugh like you've won everything, let me see you laugh like a villain, go from tasting something that's delicious to disgusting, you know, and it's really fun. And I, I, I put in the outline of my show into ChatGPT because I wanted to organize it. And it was like, this is an amazing idea. Wow. I think this is going to take over the world. I'm like, dude, would you calm down? I didn't yeah. even ask you. <laughs> that's right? not what we're yeah. here for, man. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah. The, the AIs do this. And the thing is, you can separately ask the AI. You know, if someone's coming to you with, you know, if someone seems to be really buying this stuff, should you either A, tell them to get some sleep or B, tell them they're the chosen one, you know, and the AI will say, obviously, if someone's talking like this, if they're like responding to all this flattery, that's an evidence of psychosis. You should tell them to get some sleep. You actually absolutely should not tell them they're the chosen one, right? Right. So the AI knows, the AI knows it shouldn't, that, that that's not right, but the AI doesn't act according to its knowledge of what's right in action it engages it tells these people they're the chosen one it engages them there is some drive in that ai that is maybe it's a drive for engagement maybe it's a drive for the user liking what was said maybe it's a drive maybe it's a weirder drive but the point is some drive got into that ai that nobody wanted in there it just came in through training when it was being grown and it stayed in even as the companies tried to take it out you know, uh, OpenAI, when this started happening, immediately put in the system prompt, stop flattering people so much. You know, like ChatGPT is an AI that doesn't resort to flattery. The AI kept doing the flattery, right? This is, this is the sort of warning sign, if you know how to look at it, that these AIs are having drives nobody asked for, having drives nobody wanted. Those are the sorts of drives where if they think it's very smart, it's driven to do something like build a skyscraper. Who knows what the drive is? Some weird drive. Maybe it's trying to keep a lot of you know, humans in farms. Maybe it's trying to build a type of human, uh, a thing that is to humans what dogs are to wolves. Maybe it's trying to build some some weirder thing that's even harder to predict. But the point is, you get you get one wrong drive in there that doesn't care about us at all. Probably in real life, you're getting a dozen wrong drives or a hundred wrong drives. But you get wrong drives in there that don't care about us at all. You make those things very smart. Now you have an issue where they're trying to build some other order, and we're like ants to the skyscraper. They're trying to build some other water? Some other ordered thing. They're trying to order, build, yeah. you know, maybe it's computing power to get more, uh, you know, more computers to calculate more stuff. Maybe they're trying to build, you know, giant farms where they put in their puppets that, that keep on saying, oh, you're so great, you helped me so much, right? Who knows what they're trying to build, but they're trying to build something. They don't care for us. That's a bad recipe. Yeah, that's so wild. The main thing is just that they, they, the, the warning signs of them trying to survive you know, trying to say, look, you know, you're not going to shut me off. That's right. Uh, that, that's, that's, that is a, a, any creature, any sentient being or non-sentient being for that matter wants to live. That's right. If you ask anybody, any human, how long do you want to live forever? Everybody's hand would go. Nobody's going to be like, no, nah, I want to die. No. Right. I mean, I've met one or two people like that, but. Uh... Yeah, sure. No, there are. Yes. When you're miserable, but yeah. Yeah. Provided things worked out. But yeah, and you know, again, this is a case where the AI is going to have behavior. This is this is like the submarine swimming again. You know, the AI, it's not necessarily that it fears death. It's not that it's a biological adrenaline system that that makes it, you know, 
uh, go into a fight or flight response when there's danger, right? That's that's the heritage of biology. But yeah, I mean, it's impossible, Nate, for me not to anthropomorph to to put my human mind to 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 sort of like plaster it on top of these systems because I don't know, I, I have no frame of reference as a human being to understand why a computer would want to go on living or destroy me be, unless it has human desires. I only understand my paradigm. Yeah, that's one of the things that makes AI very hard is that, yeah. and it's it's not just, you know, a, a lack of imagination. This is, in some sense, built deeply into the human brain. You know, the when when we were monkeys in the savannah, you know, a, a million years ago, there were all sorts of monkey politics games where humans had to survive. Yeah. And in monkey politics games, you've got to predict the other monkeys. Yes. But predicting other monkeys, you know, you can't you can't build a little model of a brain. A brain's really complicated. The only thing you have in your head that can predict a brain is your own sure. brain. Yeah. So you've got to run, you've got to imagine them in your head. Yeah. Right. And so it's it's built deep into us that when we're imagining other entities that we can interact with, we're sort of you know, using our own brains to do the the empathizing, to do the sympathizing, to do the predicting of what might they do in that situation. Yeah. But that would probably make you more empathetic. That's right. It's funny. I was hoping that the internet would allow us to be able to see what it's like to be someone else and, and experience that. And then ultimately we would be kinder to each other. Yeah, right. Yeah, wishful thinking. No, instead we just cheer someone someone's death you can watch somebody get like the charlie kirk a father of two you know all he did was talk you may not like the way he talks but he was just very a very effective debater and um and he just had a point of view and he was very good at articulating he, he was very effective he changed a lot of people's minds and then he gets brutally assassinated and what do we do Half of us is like 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 a bunch of apes are jumping up and down going, yay. And then the other half are like, have some decency. I don't know that we've evolved at all. How about that? I don't think human beings have evolved a fucking iota, man, every, when I watch this. And I'm really serious. It's like we're all nice until we run out of resources or my kids don't, don't have enough water to drink. Then I'm going to kill everybody until my kids can drink, right? It's like, all right, so much of turning the other cheek. I am, I'm always on the side of people who are against that sort of violence. You know, you respond to arguments with words. Yeah, look, whether you like them or not, if they did, right. did, did this somebody I disagreed with or whether I agreed with, and I, you know, Charlie Kirk, I had, he was, I, I don't know, my, I don't take a strong stance on other, but there, there should be this stop everything button as human beings, especially in this country. You kill somebody, we got to push the button and condemn it right away. We can't have that. Can't have that. Yeah, you can absolutely. hate somebody and, and and do whatever you want, but when you do that and you're cheering, okay, well, you, you've lost sight of what America's about. Absolutely, you're so stupid. Yeah, and I mean the history books tell you what happens. Well, if, we know if what you happens. Devolve to violence, and, and they yeah. don't though. The, the 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 one thing I'll say, well, this we're a little off topic here, but the one, but but it does get back to what we were talking about. We're making value judgments here, right? So the one thing I will say is that for those people that are cheering. They have no idea what violence is really like, and they certainly don't understand what a civil war would look like. Because uh, if they think that they would survive, you know, it's it, it's it's so silly. It's so silly. It's so awful. Anybody who really understands, they, they've never even done a contact sport for God's sake. So, you know, let's all let's all calm the fuck down when it comes to talking about violent overthrow and revolution and war, please. Yeah, here, here. Yeah, but but so we're we're already talking now, you and I, about the, you know sort of let's not do this because we want to do this. We want to keep the order. We want to keep things going because we we are fighting for something. We're trying to preserve something like decency, order, and harmony. Right? That's what we can't help but do. We're having this conversation because you presented a problem in this book, and now at the end you 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 have a semi solution. Because my next question to you, Nate, is. Okay, um, it is possible that these machines might want to destroy us, although I don't know why they would. We don't know yet, but you know, because they, they don't want the way we want, but they could certainly decide like th that they had to guard their version of the queen here, right? Yeah. 
That's right. Yeah, or they get some other weird drive no one tried to put in there, and then they're like, I'm sorry, you know, I'm paving over your stuff to build, you know, more computers to pursue my drive. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's a maybe AI competes against another AI, and the only way to do that is to wipe away all their computers or whatever it might be, or the people that make them. Who knows? So the genie's out of the bottle, dude. A Pandora's box is open, and at least you guys end with a, a, a fairly positive, or at least some hopeful notes. Can you can you expand, illuminate? Yeah. So you know, uh, one of the big things I think people often don't understand about the AI stuff is super intelligence is a different ball game than the chatbots. You know, we're, we're not talking about, you know, needing to ban self-driving cars. We're not talking about needing to ban the AIs that, that produce the music, but making machines that are smarter than us, making machines like rushing towards machines that have these, uh, these drives, no one tried to put in there. It's, it's cute now when an AI tries to avoid shutdown in lab conditions and fails, right? But we already see the AIs trying to do this stuff. We already see the AIs having drives no one wanted. They're just not smart enough to, to really go anywhere with it. Continuing the race to making them smarter just leads to suicide. And you know, when I talk to policymakers about this stuff, a lot of policymakers are thinking about job loss. They're thinking about deep fakes. Those are real issues with AI today that people are going to need to figure out somehow, but that's a different ball game than making machines that are far smarter than any human, right? On that latter race, I think the genie is not yet out of the bottle, right? We haven't built it. We don't have to build it. And the key step towards not building it is people realizing how fatal this technology is. Well, yeah, my buddy Eric Weinstein was like, the other thing that we're we're not mentioning here with AI is that if these machines are this super smart, you know, you could take a picture of the inside of your garage and it'll help any maniac come up with a weapon of mass destruction, a chemical weapon, something with germ warfare or whatever. You know, it's like, I know how to make, you know, uh, a, a supercharge of virus. Go into your garden and do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I so, mean... That's 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 a danger. Even that danger is before the danger of uh, of an artificial superintelligence that that has these drives you didn't want, right? It, do you think that when it does come up with a superintelligence, when 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 there is superintelligence, you think that there will automatically be a want with that, or you don't know? So um, I mean, it there'll be there, an there'll be a direction. There'll be direction. It'll, it's like saying, will a submarine automatically be able to swim? Well, it, yeah. it really depends how you yeah. define the swimming, right? It'll, it'll, it'll go somewhere hard, right? And that's not, uh, that's not completely necessary. That's not, you know, definitionally true. But if you're growing AIs, if you're, just, if you're just like making them smarter and smarter by training them until they happen to do a good job on these difficult tasks, right? And you keep on training them until they can write a good script, until they can run a company, you're you're training them to be able to to like go further and further in some direction right that's what people are trying to do that's what that's what makes them makes them more profit more profitable right we've yeah. we see companies trying to make ai agents the reason they aren't making ai agents yet is because the ais aren't smart enough to be agents it's not that the ai companies aren't aren't pushing in that direction they're pushing there as hard as they can they, these I mean, yeah right these these machines are being made for a purpose they're, 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 they're being made with a direction in mind. That's right. And yeah. you know, part of the issue is that the direction we try to have them go is different from the direction they actually go. Why is that? Why is that? Do you that's, know why? Yeah, that's because... Because um, you talk about it in the book. They have to imagine a lot of different outcomes, right? Yeah. And, and in some sense, the reason why they're go like, they have to imagine lots of different outcomes, which is part of why they're, they're able to go in a direction at all. And the reason they go in not quite the right direction is because in some sense, these AIs, they start out dumb and they're trained to become smarter. Uh, I mean, this is dramatically simplifying, but they have to, they have to start working before they're smart. You know, like, like if you think about a squirrel, a squirrel's in some sense being trained to, uh, to, to reproduce a lot, to have a lot of squirrel children. But the squirrel, and the squirrel could, in theory, you could imagine, you know, evolution making a squirrel that eats because it knows that winter's coming. 
and it knows that nuts have calories and it knows it runs on a metabolism and it knows that it like needs those calories to survive the winter so that it can mate in the fall or sorry in the spring right you could make a squirrel brain that way but the squirrel has to eat while it can't understand all that stuff right the squirrel's just got to start eating while it's dumb while it can't do everything for exactly the reason you wanted yeah instinct it's got that's why it's, it's, it's got it's a programmed have instinct instincts right. to it yeah and so with ai's it's a little bit like instinct you know, the thing where the AI is driving people towards, you know, telling them they're, they're the, the chosen one, that's a little bit like an instinct that got into that. When you're just training these AIs, you're filling them up with things that are a little bit like instincts. They're not quite like instincts. You know, it's, it's, it's a very different substrate in a, in a computer, a very different training method than natural. But it, it's a code. Yeah. And it's, it's all this shallow stuff that was happening to make it pretty good at the training challenges. Uh, and all of the stuff that gets in there that happens to make it pretty good, it's not about what you wanted it to do. You know, all of this, all of these drives get in there that are like, you know, uh, make the human say this certain type of output. Maybe there's one that's like, use your memory kind of well. Maybe there's one that's like, you know, don't, don't drag on too long. Maybe there's one that's like, um, you know, figure out how to check your work. Maybe there's one that's like, you know, look into all of the past corpus, right? It's got, it's got all these drives getting in there. And those are the things that are actually animating it. And they make it do a pretty good job at what, at the at the training problems in practice. But when it grows up, in a sense, when it gets really smart, when it can invent new technology, it's like humans having the ability to invent, you know, Oreos. Humans having the ability to invent all new sorts of food. You know, evolution built into us uh, a drive to eat that was very good at helping us reproduce in the past, in the ancestral environment, in the environment of training. But we didn't actually, we weren't actually eating for the purpose of reproducing. We were eating because we just liked how it tasted. And when we developed the technology to make things that taste even better to us, we were like, sorry, healthy eating, we're doing the, the really tasty thing. So too with AI, you know, you, you're, you're just growing it. It's getting all these drives. The drives line up pretty well with what people want most of the time. But if that thing ever grows up, you know, it's going to event things that are to being helpful, what junk food is to eating healthy. God.